And I got on here with us tonight, I should have called this um, Questions with the Bishop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Hey, man. Shalom to you, my brother. I got none other than my good brother, Dr. William Brown, the uh, bishop and senior pastor at Boom Church here in, the, in Atlanta and the Boom Fellowship of Churches that's been growing consistently and growing quite, he quite healthily. We were together just a few weeks ago prior to me going to Texas. Uh, we were in Savannah together and we had a really good time there. Some very memorable moments. You know, I'm not going to forget all those jokes y'all cracked on me. <laughs> but <all> the <laughs> um, one of the areas that we've talked about is this issue right here. And that is how necessary are signs and wonders in the mission of the ecclesia or the church today? How necessary are signs and wonders in the mission of the ecclesia today? Because oh, is it possible that we're so educated now and so well-versed and well-schooled that we no longer believe in these things? It's kind of like somebody has said, maybe we so well-medicated and got such good health insurance we don't need to believe anymore like we used to. Bishop? Yeah, um, so I, I would say this before I even get into even responding to that just from a um, conversational perspective, I would first want to, I first want to read a scripture and I think that this is going to sum up um, the, actually will open the door to our conversation even more. Mm -hmm. Uh, is in the sense of you asking the question about the modern day, because that's what I'm seeing here. That's the question on the screen is about uh, the ecclesia or the church today. Um, and so I want to look at this, this scripture to view, because in order for us to view how the church should function today, then we should have to understand how the church functioned in antiquity or a uh, time. And so Romans chapter number one, verse number 16 um, here, of course, this is a letter um, that is inspired. I have to put a stamp on that because, you know, in today's time, you could just say a letter. People go off. Wait a minute, he just said Paul letter was just a letter. No, that's not what I'm saying. All right. But it is a letter that is written to the ecclesia or the uh, congregation or assembly, whichever uh, term you want to use uh, for a gathering of believers. But in Romans chapter one, verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of Yah for salvation or God, for salvation to everyone who believes. So we have to look at in today's time, right? Why is it that? And, and here's the answer to the question, which leads into the scripture I just read. Is it necessary? Because everyone in today's time, and I'm glad you put it up on the screen. Thanks. Thank you for that, brother. Um, in today's time, there are so many people around the world, especially pro, uh, uh, predominantly in Africa, that are using signs and wonders as a fleecing mechanism and mm. using signs and wonders as a means of drawing people into them to establish and build their own kingdoms, right? The whole purpose and mission of the gospel is not to be something that it should be preached for selfish gain. Actually, we, those who preach the gospel are sh even showing that they're more selfless than being selfish because one, this declaration of I'm not ashamed. Now, why does Paul have to make that statement? It's simply because during that day and age, the level of persecution that will be going out just by simply saying that Yeshua Hamashiach or Jesus is Lord in a Roman providence was suicide. So to sit up there and say that when you're saying that, hey, you have Caesar who's ruling and when you have all these procurators and you have all these other people in these areas, you even have not just the Roman government, but you also have the Israelite government who is maybe who a Pharisee and Sadducee, you know, those that are still waiting on Mashiach, those that were against the Messiah who came in that day. And you, as well as you have the Sadducees who don't believe in a resurrection and yet these folks are all teaming up and partnering up together. All right. To go against a powerful message, which and by the way, which is a simplistic message. 
simplistic but powerful and so this is the thing that we see in our day and age where it goes to what you're talking about the intellectualism we've lost the fact that the gospel message is so simple to where we're trying to prove how intellectual we are to other people and not for the sake of getting to know the scriptures or getting a higher education and let me be let me be very very careful when i say this Everyone is not doing this, okay? So I don't want to paint with a broad brush and saying that everyone is trying to grow theologically to be able to prove who that they know something. But there's a large amount of people, especially on the internet, it's all about being how smart, how educated, how much you study. And the power of this thing of not being ashamed of the gospel by someone, by, the, by a brother, uh, Shaul, Paul, who makes this statement, one who is qualified, who has the education, all right? We're not talking about um, someone who just woke up yesterday and decided they want to apply to go to seminary school. We're talking about someone who grew up in the culture from a young and from a child that was given to one of the top scholars of the day. And we still talking about Gamil and how how theologically sharp and sound he was with not only in halakha which is the oral traditional or teachings of things but also in the written dealing with moses all right we know the theolo how theologically sharp he was so for paul to say i'm not ashamed of that now here's the thing one named paul who has to tell the people that i'm not ashamed which the people know his track record. Now, we have the track record of who Paul was before he was converted, all right, before he was born again. Now, some of these brothers on the internet running around talking about they gangster and, and they, they pop off and all. <laughs> we don't know your track record. We just know what you tell us, but we ain't seen your rap sheet. To say, well, yeah, he done, you know, he done, he done, he got a, you know, he done had a couple of assaults on the officers or or some other stuff like that. You know, you we just going by what you say and and the persona that you you know put out there like you're a tough guy. Well, we know that Paul, we know he got his track record, we got his rap sheet. So for him to say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, right? And then not only does he turn around and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, he explains to you. The, the essence of the gospel, the power of God. Think about that. Listen to what he said. He lets you know this message I'm not ashamed of, but he also says that it is. Here's why I'm not ashamed of it. Because every power that is in the earth, whether it's the president, whether it's the governor, whether it's the mayor, no matter what it is, it has nothing compared to the power of God. Not only is the, this is the power of God, but it does something. This message is simple. It has power to it. And it does something. What does it do? It brings salvation to mm. everyone who believes? And then he goes into this whole thing about social status, and he's in and and national uh, nationalization or nationalism or nationality. He says this thing that is simple, this no, thing no, no, no. that was what you say. No, I changed the scripture for okay. a moment. I had to go back. This thing that is simple, right? This thing that is powerful, this thing that does something. He says. It's for everybody who believe. He says it's for every, it, it's it's for every. For y'all who want to argue about who's a Jew and who's a Greek, you're arguing over a minuscule thing when this whole thing, the whole purpose of it is, it's for everybody. So everybody who believes, then he says, okay, to the Jew first. Why why does Paul have to say to the Jew first? Why? Because the one who delivered the message came through the lineage of Israel. That's the whole perspective. He's not trying to say it's Israel only. He's just saying, listen, it came through the lineage. He came through the lineage of Israel. So he came to his people first. He came out of his people. And so he said he brought the message to them. But then he also said, OK, also to the Greek, too. So and then I, I will end this on, on verse 17. He says, for in it, the righteousness of Yah." It's revealed. So you want to know some revelation? You can't know a revelation if you don't preach the gospel. You can't know the power of God if you don't preach the gospel. Then you can't see the evidence of the power if you ain't bringing people into salvation. Not into culture. 
not into nationality, into being saved, being rescued, being delivered, snatched out of something, changing their whole perspective, their whole mindset. When they once was on a way on a road to hell, when they it, whether it's on this side, because there is a form of hell on this side, a form of poverty mm -hmm. and other things on this side. But not only that, this message is also to bring you out of a physical uh, 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 poverty, a physical damnation, but it also brings you out of a spiritual damnation too. It's twofold. And he says, it's revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The righteous shall live by faith. So don't just come into this accepting this one time and say, hey, this is what it is. Uh, you know, I accept it in my life. No. You have to make him a part of your life. You have to live what you've accepted. Not just keep live for a short span of time because you felt good at the moment you received salvation. No, no matter what comes in your life, no matter how hard it gets, you can't leave. You have to reside. You have to live, reside, not visit faith, reside in faith. And I end on that.